Okay, so we're continuing our analysis of the trace determinant plane. In the last video, we took a look at this region, which is where we had complex eigenvalues. What I want to do now is take a look at the region that's actually on this parabola. That was where t squared minus 4d was equal to 0, which meant that we were going to have a real eigenvalue, but it was going to be repeated. Okay. So let's just see. Looks to me like that real eigenvalue being repeated could be positive, negative, or zero. So it looks like we've got three additional regions or types of places here. So I'm going to say this is D, E, that's not the number E, and F. And I want to take a look at the sorts of phase portraits that we could have here. So if I'm at point D, that's telling me that my only eigenvalue is lambda equals t over 2, which is going to be negative because t is negative. So I would have one eigenvalue. Now, knowing that I have one eigenvalue isn't enough for me to know whether it's I can find two independent eigenvectors or just one. So there are two possibilities for my phase portrait here. In either one, the origin is my equilibrium solution. Okay. If I can find two independent eigenvectors, then we learned that actually every vector that wasn't zero was going to be an eigenvector. So all of my non-equilibrium solutions would be straight line solutions. I could have that, or it could be that I just have one independent eigenvector. I'm just going to draw it as if it's on the x-axis. Obviously, I'd need more information about the matrix and how I ended up here to know exactly what the eigenvector was. And then remember, this is the situation where my solution curves are trying to spiral, but they simply can't. Whoops. Would have to be a mirror image over here. Ah! I can draw this. There we go. Okay. Either way, the origin is a sink. All of my solutions are approaching the origin. Okay. Let's jump to F, and then we'll come back and do E. If we're at F, my one eigenvalue is T over 2, but now that would be positive because we're in the region where T is positive. So again, I don't have enough information based just on knowing that to know whether I'm going to have one independent or two independent eigenvectors. If I have two, that's fantastic. That's the situation where every non-equilibrium solution is a straight line solution, and I would have a phase portrait that looked something like that. Or I might have just one independent eigenvector. Again, I'm just going to put it on the x-axis. And this would be the situation where my solutions are wanting to spiral, but they can't quite spiral because they get blocked by the straight line solution. Either way, my equilibrium solution at the origin is a source because all non-equilibrium solutions move away from that equilibrium solution. Okay. So let's take a look now at E. If I look at E, lambda equals 0 is my only equilibrium solution. This is exciting. So I could have a phase portrait that I can't really draw. I'm just going to write in words. Everything is an equilibrium solution. This is incredibly boring. This would be what we have if the matrix was 0. <laughs> so basically, it's saying, hey, the derivative is 0. Everything's constant. Every constant uh, vector would be a solution. What's more interesting is if I just have one eigenvector that's an equilibrium solution. This time, to make it a little clearer to see, I'm not going to make that on the x-axis. Let's just say this was my line 
of equilibrium solutions. Now, when we had zero as an eigenvector, if we had an eigenvalue, rather, if we had a positive eigenvector, uh, eigenvalue, the other solutions would move away from that parallel to the eigenvector corresponding to that positive one. And if we had a negative one, they would move forward. But here we've got zero as a repeated root. So let's explore just a little bit. I know that when I have a repeated root, repeated eigenvalue, but only one independent eigenvector, my general solution is e to that eigenvector times e naught plus t e to that eigenvalue, sorry, e to that eigenvalue times t times v naught plus t e to that eigenvalue times t naught times v1. But of course, that's just v naught plus t copies of v1. And I know that v1 is either 0, in which case I'm just getting v naught, um, or v1 is an eigenvector. And since v1 is a minus lambda i times v naught, if v1 is 0, then v1, v naught is an eigenvector, and I'm on my straight line of straight line, sorry, my line of equilibrium solutions. Otherwise, what I'm going to have is that v1 has to be a vector that's parallel to this line, because it would be an eigenvector. So it turns out what my solutions are going to look like is they're just going to be lines that are parallel to that line of equilibrium solutions. And on one side, they'll be going in one direction. And on the other side, they'll be going in the other direction. We didn't actually take a look at an example like that together in the video lectures. There were a couple of examples that showed up in the homework. So it's entirely possible that by the time you're watching this video, uh, you've done that homework and or we've done it together in office hours. But do make a note of that. That's an interesting scenario that we could have. So that's the sort of thing that could happen at point E. So next video, we'll come back and we'll take a look at what happens if we're below the parabola so that we're actually getting real eigenvalues. All right, see you then.